the <laughs> well the convener and thank you um Mr. Dayo. I must say that it's an honor being here. Um and um, we are not taking this for granted. Thank you very much for inviting me to be on this panel. Um I'm going to be looking as we have said I'm going to be looking at infertility and um, medical imaging. Uh, but let me just add this brief one that um, over the years we have looked at uh, maternal fetal mortality, which is quite very high in Nigeria. Um, and um, it's a two-way thing. Uh, a lot of our patients have uh, their mentality when it comes to um, taking care of themselves and getting medical help is still a lot. So we need to increase our awareness in this part of the world. Um, maybe for the highbrow areas, you may say that they have something, but you need to go over to um, the other areas and see what um, they experience every day. You imagine people coming in at nine minutes and they expect um, the clinician or the obstetrician to do magic. That's what we have seen over the years. And people coming in with quarter uh, to die um, cases. So we ex when we look at those things, you'll be wondering, how do we sort this out? Mm -hmm. So um, number one, awareness. Thank God for um, this program. Um, we're raising awareness. I'm sure people are listening. People are looking at what is going on. And people are beginning to, whether we like it or yes, the awareness is increasing. And people are beginning to look at how can you take medical practitioners to be uh, held accountable for what they do. For every life, it is very, very important. So awareness must continue. We must continue to look at how we can help people know what is important, what to do, what not to do, what to take and what not to take. When they complicate issue and they bring it back. So I'm sure one of these days we are going to be bringing people together to look at how, what is the way forward in reducing maternal fetal mortality. Now, saying that Okay, moderator, you might want to switch to the next speaker. I think his connection has um, gone bad. So, yeah, so you might want to move to Dr. Rock and then come back to him once he's back in. Okay. Um, Dr. Rock, sir, can we just um, have a brief... Um, Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can, please. Okay. Thank you. I, I really appreciate for all of this nature because uh, we, the scientists, or the medical personnel, no matter how much we do, if we don't disseminate what we have done to the public, it is totally uh, useless. I can use that word. Because uh, you see in a country like us that people don't even read. The medical experts go the left, the public go the right, and we expect to have results. It doesn't work that way. Mm. So I really appreciate forum of this nature, no matter how small it is, that for tomorrow is going to uh, get us to a larger audience. Like one man said, uh, a dot. So I believe that this dot is going to spread around. <laughs> <laughs> this dot is going to spread around and really take what we believe. And because mm -hmm. I believe in this, I believe in this so much. When it comes to infertility, uh, we are paying a lip service to this very important aspect of mm -hmm. our life. I, I, I will talking to people say, I, I wish I am in the National Assembly or even the State House. Mm -hmm. We should be able to bring in the law that empower people because we have so many interventions. Concerning infertility, even before I want to speak about my own main issue, people uh, play this service. We are about the stolen babies, stolen children. Who are the ones doing them? 
it is I, when police begin to investigate, they cannot be there any court stuff because mm. the names that will be mentioned can be uh, they cannot even go back. So we have a lot to do as far as infertility is concerned mm. in terms of medical intervention, social intervention, uh, family background intervention, and so many things. We need to really do much about it. So I want to thank the convener. And I also want to also uh, give you my sympathy for the departed. He really, really thank you when you, when you mentioned those words. Really, really thank you to God. Such a so I really find myself to be lucky to be in this platform. And I believe that this is, a, we are just starting. This shouldn't be the end. We should do as much as we can so that we can inform society about the the abatement of sleep. Thank you very much. Do you want me to go into my lecture or should allow for this to come in? Um, yes, please. Nice to have you. Then um, hopefully um, Dr. Bode will be back online okay. to wrap okay. up okay. after you, please. Okay. So I, I, I'll be looking at infertility in men and women, the laboratory aspects. What we see in the lab, real-time situation in the lab, even today, uh, I gave a, a bottle uh, to a, a couple yesterday. They brought a sample this afternoon by 12 noon. I just analyzed a, a semen sample from a man. So I can even use that as a case study. I've worked in the lab for about 23 years. And most of what I'm going to say is based on my experience. What causes it? I'll first of all look at the, the man aspect. Because when there's infertility in a, in a among couple, I think the women, to the best of our knowledge, no. are always the first uh, uh, no. culprit. They say my wife not be born, and the and the, no. the brothers of the man, the sisters, the in laws, is that attacking the the woman. But it may surprise you to know that um, by statistics, my personal statistics is like the men. Are even the the ones who contribute more to infertility among couples than women. So the laboratory aspect aspect that maybe the causes of infertility. I want to look at this the semen and the sperm. The uh, what what we notice in the lab is mainly number one low sperm count. Low sperm count. The man ejaculate a low sperm a, a low. It means that a man ejaculate a low number of sperms. And okay, in, in this sperm is low sperm count. Some people have no sperm cells at all. You just bring the you just bring that fluid, what I call the the the, the 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 semen, and you look through the semen. There's nothing like a cell, no sperm cell. That is a very difficult situation to handle. No sperm cell at all. Hmm. There's one we call low sperm uh, count. Hmm. So uh, the the what causes infertility in men are majorly those two factors: low sperm count, no sperm count, no sperm count at all. Hmm. And a lot of couples, a lot of couples suffer from this. So the uh, we also have what we call low sperm motility. Hmm. There are some people that have this. Uh, sperm. They have enough of it. They have a good number of sperm, but their motility is very, very bad. Mm. The, the, the sperm cannot cannot move. When you put it under the slide, it cannot move at all. You all remain where it is and look very, very weak. Just like a man that is running, cannot run far. And because of this, uh, conception for a woman, the wife can be very, very difficult. Then, there's what we call abnormal sperm. The sperm may have an unusual shape, making it harder to move and utilize an egg. There are some quality you expect from a, a sperm. The, if you are familiar with the picture of a tadpole, that is how a sperm cell looks like, like a tadpole. Those small, small, uh, those baby frogs inside water. You can see the head pointed. You can see some sperm, uh, sperm under the microscope. Instead for the head to look pointed, the head down look round, round. Because the egg, the sperm is going to penetrate. It will use the head to push into the, the egg that released by a woman. And that can take place. But when that happens, 
that the eggs of the sperm become rounded, then that is a very, very difficult situation. I, I must share this for us to, as a, a point of experience. <laughs> I have a, a certain sperm uh, a semen they brought to the lab some time ago. If you see how mucus from the nose looks like, mucus, thick mucus, that is how the sperm looks like. And when you put this sperm under a, a, the microscope, the, the sperm cells are there, but it are trapped, they are trapped inside this thick mucus of sperm. Mm. I've never seen a case like that in my mm. life. Never seen something like that in my life. Mm. Never seen it. Mm. And I think the, my, that is the first time I can see that kind of abnormality. So we have things of this nature that is really affecting people. Yes. And most of them will suffer for years before they finally find it difficult to say, let me approach a lab or a hospital so that they can help out. So we also have other medical conditions that can cause abnormality mm. of infertility in, uh, in, uh, in men. Uh, things like overheated uh, testicles. You realize that God created the penis to, to descend in a descended manner. I think some of people, when they were in secondary school, when we were in secondary school, we wear very tight pants in which we have to package the penis very well so that girls around will not see that we did anything in that place. And you can imagine somebody going to school by 8 o'clock in the morning and coming back from school by 4 o'clock and the penis has been tied into the anus, let me say so. Such a person will end up bring up to have uh, problems. Even we as adults, I, 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 we, I always advise men, don't wear tight, uh, tight pants. Boxers are good. Can just wear a boxer in which you are you are you, you are scrotum can be seen okay. the very well the way God created it. Mm. And we some people also have ejaculation disorders. Some of them they produce the sperm inside them, but the sperm cannot come out. So that one can be left by for the doctors to go and look at the Pabode who look at the, the under the uh, the machine to look at it and see whether the the tubes are open or not. Another thing that also we also find in some of these men with infertility is called hormonal imbalance. And that has to do with low testosterone. The hormone that helps a man to be a man is called testosterone. And when you do it in the lab, it should start from, uh, from one to four nano milligram. But some people, it is less than that. They don't even have anything. So if we're having uh, 0 0.3, some have 0 0.5, it can't measure up. And some people, when you do this test, sometimes we say, okay, let's not only do only testosterone, let's do some female hormones, like, uh, like, like the progesterone, like the prolactin. You see them having so much of the prolactin. It oh. means that if they press the milk, or the breast of this person, they start bringing out milk like a woman. So these are things that is uh, we have, I've seen over the years that it's affecting men from from uh, from performing at the at the optimal uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. Then another factor that also causes infertility in men we have seen is that their age. A, a lot of people in those days you see people settling down, getting married at 18, 20, 21. But now you watch out some weddings in the church. You see some men having bald head, some 30, 70, 70 years, some 42 years getting married. And it will really affect some of them because it's like the younger a man is, the good quality uh, sperm is going to uh, the, the produce. So that is for the man. There are so many of them, I don't want to bother us. I think uh, the talk for they going to talk about a lot in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in their own uh, aspect. Hmm. So let me look at the women. Uh, infertility in women. Um, age. A lot of women, by the time they come to you, they say, I cannot give birth. Most of them are getting married 30 something years and all that. That also affects them, affects the hormone. I'm going to discuss more on that. <coughs> the age of a woman is really a, a factor. Mm. And also, most of them too. Hormonal imbalance, hormonal imbalance, 
like the result I discussed with the couple this afternoon, uh, the woman is not seeing her period at all for two months. Mm. Not seeing her period. Then we do a test called hormonal assay. A normal hormonal assay should be done on the 25th day of a woman menstrual cycle. It means that before you do this test, you have to calculate the day the menstruation is, is starting in the woman. That particular day, the, the woman starts her menses, seeing the first drop of blood from that day, you count 21 days. Mm. You collect the blood sample and you analyze the hormone. Mm. Things like follicles, stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, prolactin, progesterone. If they have money, you can go as far as doing uh, doing a uh, tyrosine function test, the T3, T4, and the THN. But they are very, very important. So when you do these things, like the one I have this afternoon, if I we can be able to present the result. For the prolactin, which is the breast milk, normal values start from 1 to 16 mg mm. per meal. Mm. Her own is our own is 68.8 nanogram per meal. Mm. As she's not even breastfeeding, I ask her, if you press your milk, uh, you mean your, your, your breast, do you see milk? You say, yes, milk now comes out of my breast. As, as of now, she has been married for six months, she finds it difficult to take it. And if we are not doing an intervention to bring down that breast milk that she's currently secreting now, getting married will be very, very, very difficult. And what is the cause of this? Let me mention this for our knowledge and also for our hearing. A lot of uh, couples, a lot of young women are now living their life on the social media, people teaching them how to have the best form of sex. And you see a woman that is trying to get uh, conceived, I uh, mean, uh, trying to get pregnant every night. The husband is sucking her breast like a small child. Every night, every night, every night, sucking her breast. And this time stimulates the, the gonads stimulate the brain, and the brain starts producing milk as if she is actually breastfeeding a baby. Wow. And when the, this hormone in the breast called prolactin becomes high, the hormone of pregnancy, which is called progesterone, now becomes very, very low. Wow. And today, her result is uh, the hormone, I think the pregnancy, the, 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 the progesterone is about three point something, whereas normal values start from about 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 uh, about uh, seven to something. You can see how low it is. And the implication of this is that a low progesterone, even if by mistake it initiates conception, it cannot take the conception to the end. Wow. Progesterone is like a, a plug that that people uh, that help to kickstart a vehicle mm -hmm. and also drive that vehicle to the end. Mm -hmm. So if the plug of a, 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 a car or a motorcycle is bad, it can be making like pa 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 pa. It cannot even start it. If by mistake it starts that that vehicle or start that uh, motorcycle or a car, it cannot drive far. Mm -hmm. So women with low progesterone, even if by mistake they get conceived, the pregnancy cannot even reach three months. It will mm -hmm. come down. It will come down every month. They're getting pregnant. They shall go down. And you know the culprit now: the mother-in-law, the father-in-law. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a witch, uh, go out of mind, begin to drink only on. Only. So these are the issues that we must address. And most of all these issues you can just be addressed by me talking to them. I have people that come to me, me talking to them, just talking to them. I solve their problem by 60%. I don't want to mention about the fibroid. Dr. Bode will do all that fibroid, the variance. Those ones are issues on their own. So the hormonal imbalance is that husbands, the, the young couples, uh, should they should leave the woman breast alone? I because I was really informed about this. I I only suck my my wife's breast after I've gotten all my four children, and we now start our honeymoon. So <laughs> we start our honeymoon now. I can go there because I've stopped having. Uh, we have stopped having. You see a very young couple, but their problems start when they are dating. What they call dating. If they start to stop my brain, do all these things, so that really affects them. So the problem they have is hormonal imbalance. Mm. So tackling this problem, a good laboratory scientist must look at these different sorts of hormones. Mm. The prolactin, the progesterone, the HSA, the LH, the, the THS, the T3, the T4. 
to know how uh, to, to help them. So another problem we always see is that we see in the lab is that women with high level of cholesterol always will have this problem of fertility. High protein, uh, I don't know how that is linked, but for my, for my, when you combine all these, most of them always have high level of cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So these are the laboratory angles to the causes of infertility in, in women. Mm -hmm. Another one is also an infection. Mm, I had an experience many years ago. There's a woman who is 54 years. She said her period stopped five years ago. And she came having a, 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 a having urinary discharge. She had, a, she had an infection. So we did what we call hypergenal swap and urine, uh, urine culture for her. We isolated E. coli. So I, I had a nurse working with me that day. Just say, ah, madam. She don't even have money. Bring the, bring the, let's treat you. We call this mom and go and buy a very good quality gentleman that was sensitive and all that one. Yeah, the woman took some injection. Before mm -hmm. I, I saw the shock of my life. So she came back the following day. She took Yoruba, me and Roya Yoruba. He said, oh, doctor, I love go away. A doctor will make me people to laugh at me. What happened that? She starts seeing her period again. Wow. And then, after five years of the period that disappeared. So it never means that most of these things they call uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, cessation of period. Uh, I'm 45 years. I don't see my period. Most of them are not actually uh, that. It's an infection. Most of them can be infection. So if it is properly treated, and but you know we have very bad drugs in circulation. In those days, we don't have good drugs. They can use good drugs and they treat them, and everything will just become normal. So infection, hormonal imbalance. Uh, chemi uh, chemistry problem can also be actually affecting them. So I don't want to take all your time, uh, except maybe doing patient time and answer. If not, I can say, let me, let me stop there and say, so that we can do their the, 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 the own aspect to, so that we can learn more. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Arok, um, for your valuable contributions and wealth of experience that you have shared with us. Um, so, um, Dr. Bode is on the call now. Um, let's um, quickly hear from him um, his presentation. Then I hope we are just um, we are having our questions prepared. After which, I'm going to let us know what the organization has actually done to see how our members can actually benefit or mitigate um, infertility-related issues, both for them and their um, loved ones. So, um, Dr. Badeva, to you. Thank you. Dr. Adewumi, your connection is frozen again. Okay, um, while we wait for Dr. Adewumi to come back, um, I don't know, is there anybody on the call that um, has a question? You can make use of the hand tool or you can type it in for um, Mr. Horrock. Um, just in response to the things um, we have heard earlier. Okay, um, so let me just, um, I hope um, Dr. Bode comes back online, but um, so let me just share with us um, some of the things we have been able to do as an organization. Um, just like um, we have heard from the previous speakers, um, the issue of infertility is actually a cause for concern um, 
and the infertility related um, interventions in Nigeria is very, very expensive, as we all know. Um, people usually spend close to a million naira, and um, it does not actually guarantee. Um, it does not guarantee success. Um, but by the grace of God, what um, we have been able to do as an organization is to partner with another sister organization. Uh, for those of us that read through the um, flyer that was sent in earlier, um, one of our speakers for tonight, who unfortunately is not on the call at the moment because he had an emergency. Uh, you know what it is with uh, medical practice. <laughs> Uh, once duty calls, you just have to, you just have to obey, um, because um, that's the oath we have sworn. Um, so he's not on the call at the moment. He's actually the founder of um, Act the Gynecologist, and then by the grace of God, they have been able to. They now have an infertility center here in Nigeria in um, Alimosho local government area to be precise. And um, I want us to know that um, for members of Clyde and for their relatives, just in an event where we have, um, if we have such people, we can have access to the facility. And um, by the grace of God, we can have a very um, discounted um, a discounted um, pricing for any of the services that we require. Um, so as an organization, we have been able to do that because we know that um, when we bring smiles on the faces of couples, on the faces of our members, and um, we help them secure, even though um, we know that this is, it's actually a gift of God, the fruit of the womb, but then science, God has allowed science to triumph or to at least make it record a lot of success in that regard. And um, so um, as an organization, we believe that we can do so much to mitigate this challenge and make people smile. So um, that is one of the things we have been able to do. And um, we are trusting God that um, in, the, in the near future, um, probably by the next time we are having this meeting, he himself will be on the call to let us know the logistics um, as regards that. Um, apart from that, on the call also, um, we have some other professionals on the call, uh, one of which is uh, Mrs. Juliet Haoma, a institute medical lab scientist also, uh, even though she is in the public service, but um, she's lent us a wealth of experience and um, advice. So for our members who need counseling um, in as regards to um, consultation with um, assessing um, laboratories for um, um, care and investigations, I want you to know that we have a lot of them handy. Also on the call is um, Mrs. Morani Keji Afolabi. Um, that's my wife. Um, <laughs> uh, she is a nurse, an accident and emergency and um, orthopedic specialist. And um, she is also um, going to be offering a professional service free for members of the organizations. Um, the truth of the matter is a lot has actually been done. A lot of building blocks have been fabricated. And all we just need is just to put them one on top of the other and make a building each. Um, already we also have part of us, people who are, uh, because this is going to be artificial intelligence driven. Um, I'm talking about the Amnima and Professor um, project. It's going to be artificial intelligence driven and it's going to be accessible irrespective of your location. Um, so for the physicians and clinicians that are identified to be part of the scheme, what we are doing is currently we are developing a, an app with which just with a single click, you can assess um, um, clinicians of either cardiac of different specialties. And uh, by the grace of God, um, hopefully towards by the end of the year, we'll be launching the app and then um, our members can have access to it. So. Um, a lot is actually being done 
um, on the background and um, with the support of the convener and um, the executives of the flight organization, um, I want us to know that um, the future is bright. And by the grace of God, some of these challenges um, we are seeing today will just be a thing of the past. I'm sure definitely in no distant time, we would have our own maternal and child care hospital um, by the grace of God. We are working towards it. Um, the plans are already on the way. And um, by the grace of God, as soon as um, the funds begin to trickle in, we will begin to make giant steps. So we are not scared about what the future holds for us as an organization um, by the grace of God. So um, I'm not sure if there is any question in the chat box at the moment. Uh, okay, I think there is one. So I think uh, Mr. Orrock is going to help with that. Let me just read it out um, so that Mr. Orrock can uh, address it. And of course, other professionals on the call too may contribute to it. So the question is, what causes, what causes it for a couple of 15 years not to even conceive talkless of having a baby very worried? So um, this is one of the questions on the call. Um, so Mr. Rock, um, let's have your um, as far expert opinion on it before we... I can see the a couple of 15 years. Yes, a couple of 15 years, and uh, they have not even been able to conceive, let alone of, you know, it's something to conceive, is another thing for it to get to time. So, mm -hmm. in this case, they've not been able to conceive. And so, um, and it's a worrying situation yeah. given that duration. So, um, just for your um, opinion, expert opinion, and advice, please. Then let's hear you, Mr. Roxa. Thank you. Yeah. And for 15 years, it's really, really traumatizing. And I've also seen a couple like this. Uh, in fact, when we, when I started this uh, using laboratory skill to diagnose infertility, I had a lot of people that came in from different walks of life. And I was surprised to hear uh, a lot of the uh, their, their comments. One woman and a man say they have been in this condition for 15 years. I said, for the first time, somebody actually talked to them to address their problem. Hmm. I don't know whether you hear what I'm saying, but it's for the first time. Which means they can, and, and the worst, I'm not, I'm, not, I, 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 I'm not against anybody in the profession. The worst thing is when they meet the, the big and the mighty, the gynecologist. A big, big man from you just go there. There's no one on one is what to so actually know what is the problem with these people. Just go there, the next thing, just enter, ah, uh, uh, bam, 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 bam. Uh, yeah, go and do a SAT, uh, go and do this, go and do this. And I ask them, where is your result? They say they took everything in the fight. Nobody has said, but actually address them. That is the issue I mentioned, one after the other. Hmm. You look at the man, you look at the woman. Let's, in fact, I go to me. I like approaching this issue from a very simple point of view. Very simple. Just ask them, you saw your wife dress. Like one, uh, one young lady said, Ah, my husband, like, like hey, my daughter. That is what he does at the boy's sleep. He will be sucking the wife dress until he sleeps every night. So these are the things that need to be addressed. So I don't know for 15 years. Whether somebody has been, they have been lucky to see somebody that they can discuss one on one to actually know what is the issue. I think that is that is where I, I think that's what I can say. They should actually see someone that can can know, can address the issue the way it is. Whether they will have a child of their own or not. Then, first of all, let us know what is at stake. Before we can say, okay, let's go for parents intervention. We have so many interventions these days. Laboratory intervention, IVA, this and so thing. So it shouldn't be the fact that somebody just gets stuck at the bus stop and somebody cannot give that person a right, a right good direction. Say, this is the way to go. I don't know what I've been able to, to answer your question. Uh, they say, how soon? Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go on, sir. You go on, sir. You go on. Okay, okay. That's it. How, how soon can a woman who stopped taking pills 
for family planning for almost two months ago be conceived. You should understand the fact that um, most pills, most people so to the best of my knowledge, you I've seen women come and say that after I I took so and so pill, I cannot conceive. You see, the way we practice medicine in a in a black man's land is different from how they practice medicine. Okay, I think his connection has gone. So if you just want to use the uh, the interregnum to probably take a few more questions in readiness oh. for Dr. Bade and Dr. O'Rock or something or whatever you want to do. Okay. <clears throat> um, I hope you will be able to um, rejoin the call. Sorry about that. It's one of the things me, I serve and convener, I always discuss about <laughs> how connectivity in Nigeria in the 21st century Okay. It's still um, a subject of discourse and um, a troubling challenge. I just hope one day we can get over this. Um, so, like I was saying, um, for all of these people that um, have um, um, questions and um, that have expressed them, um, you should um, reach out to us. Um, I will drop my phone number on the chat group um, so that we can link you up um, with um, our consultants, clinicians that are affiliated with the, with the directorates so that you can have a special session with them um, apart from enlightenment, even if there is anything that can be done in the interim. Yes, that, um, for those in Nigeria, it should not be an issue. For those abroad, we are yet to spread our beta cruise <laughs> mm. to that end. But we know that um, by the grace of God, as time goes on, um, we'll be able to do that. We have a lot of friends all around. It's just um, that we've not had so, we don't have so many people that have identified um, with the project at the moment. Though Dr. G. Dalarade is actually based in the UK, um, but by the grace of God, we have um, more people um, joining in. So I hope um, our speakers will be able to come back online to take the questions. So um, please um, just permit, permit it to be so for now. Um, so um, I I'm going to put in my number there. You would get to... Get to, you can send me a message after now so that I will be able to connect you to, to our people. Thank you. So, um, so as not to borrow, I don't know whether we have um, other contributions or member um, from the audience, please. So we can take. Um, take that contributions and other questions too. You can still send them in. I will take notices of them and then I'll write them out. Probably once we have a transcript of the response, we can also paste it in the group forum just for the benefit of our members. Okay, so um, I I saw I saw um, 
a comment it says no conception sir but she is five time i have more questions okay um for the person who asked the question um how what what um uh, what is the assurance to as in how did you come about the conclusion that um, the person is fertile is it that the person is in a, is in a fertile uh, window because um from the age of um 18 to the age of um, 30 and in some in some um, other instances 35 is believed to be the most fertile window for a woman and so so is it because are you Wow. Well, uh, it's really, really interesting. It's a very interesting session and I very much agree with everybody. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of Falabi's line as well, the internet connection, and that is what everybody goes through in Nigeria that we keep talking about all the time. Uh, we've had three, uh, the moderator and, and the two speakers and uh, all three of them are struggling with internet connection. But I can see Barrister Richamond uh, Aladis and rest up. Uh, and um, I believe there are a couple more uh, medical personnel. I do not know. Uh, I, I can see Mrs. Moreni KG Afolabi on, online, so I don't know whether she might be able to take Richamond's question. Barrister Richamond, can you unmute and uh, uh, let's take your question? Um, I'm just hoping that we can. I can't do anything about it if, if, since it's going to be medical. That's not my line at all. But at least Mrs. Moreni Kenchi Afalabi is online, so she might be able to step in to, to answer that. So go ahead, Barrister uh, Nafalade. Uh, thank you, Mr. Convener. Uh, it's my delight to be on this uh, lecture tonight. And I uh, must thank the, our medical experts. Who has enlightened us on one of the things? Uh, but I just have an, uh, a question or two as to uh, fertility. Uh, there is a friend of mine that was diagnosed of uh, aspermia. Aspermia is a, is a situation of no sperm count at all in the egg, uh, in the egg cell, or what do they call it, in the sperm. So there's no. Okay, there's if no... you just hold on, I uh, just hold on. Uh, Barrister Adeumi is coming in, and of course, Mrs. Uh, Afalabi is there as well. So they might just be able. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Bodi Adeumi is coming in. He's uh, he's a very very big uh, man in the medical field in Nigeria, and I think. Hola, the Afalabi, are you back? I'm here. I'm here, please. Fantastic. So I'm handing over your call back to you, but I believe. Uh, Mr. Bodiade with me is in the house, so you, uh, so I believe you can take it from there. Yes, it's def most definitely back. So Aola de Afalabi, over to you. You're in charge. Uh, but uh, Rich uh, Barrister Nathalade wants to ask uh, a couple of questions, so you just take charge from there. Okay, so um, right there are loads uh, of other sorry, there are loads of other questions in the chat as well, and uh, Doctor Orok is back as well. So I think uh, all over, but we are not getting any video feed from your end. So let's just see if we can get it on. Fantastic. Okay, um, thank you very much. Sorry about that. Um, so Mr. Natalade, just for the benefit of our speakers, you can just ask your question. They will take notice of it, and. Um, we would also respond after but um, Dr. Bode must have given um, his own talk. So just go ahead with your question, please. All right, sir. Uh, thank you very much. In your absence, I thank you for the enlightenment, at least you brought up. And uh, at the same time, I, I must observe that uh, you have done a very good job to the topic. Uh, I want to ask, in respect of, uh, I have someone who was diagnosed of aspermia. And uh, I wouldn't know the right definition, now, but I know it's lack of a uh, cell in the sperm. Complete mm -hmm. lack of the sperm. So, and uh, in the situation. Lack of it, yeah. Sir? Yes, complete lack of sperm cell. I just don't know. You are correct. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, please, I want to know if it's treatable. And uh, if it's treatable, 
what could uh, a person diagnose with such two? Then secondly, I want to ask, in the medical line or by prof professionally, is the issue of uh, is she or who are you uh, recognized in the medical line? Are we uh, are we <laughs> okay, uh, Arak may not know the meaning of uh, this. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, are, we are aware of the fact that uh, in some instances, there says uh, some spiritual father will say there is a calabash or the uh, pot inside somebody's stomach. And because of that, the person will not be able to see. And uh, there are so many other spiritual circumstances. But I want to know if the medical line actually believes in this and uh, what the solution is. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you for your questions. We've noted them, and uh, I'm sure it will also it will be treated. But now that we have Dr. Body on call, um, probably you will also be able to address some of the concerns because another person was asking about ectopic pregnancy and the likes in the chat box, um, the risks, the breakthrough, the causes, and... Um, and stuff like that. So I know um, to some extent, Dr. Bode would is um his discussion is supposed to cover some or even not and part of that. So, Dr. Bode, over to you. We have been anticipating to I, hear from you. I, <laughs> I I am so I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure it can only get better in our country. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I had to. I, I had to drive out to look for network. Wow. Um, finally, I've gotten network. So in a few minutes, I'm just <laughs> going to do justice to that. Um, the first thing now is this imaging and infertility. Number one thing is, um, let me say there are five things that are very important. Number one is the uterine factor or the womb factor. Number two is the fallopian tube factor. Uh, the tube. There's something called the tube that links the ovary to the uterus. Number three, hormonal factor. I'm sure Chief Orok would have uh, discussed a lot about hormonal factor. Uh, one hormone called follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the eggs to produce uh, follicles. So when that is not working, be rest assured that there's no way the person can um, have a child. Number four, is the ovarian factor. Ovaries must produce egg. And I must lay this foundation here at this junction that from 20, probably from 18, when a lady becomes highly reproductive, to 35, that's the peak. It peaks at 35. At 35, it starts to come down. That's so why when you come to us and ask us, that's the peak. To, um, it peaks at 35. Check for at infertility. 35 if you're 35, we start that's why you come to regardless us of whether you have to, done um, one year. You know, so if you are less than that, because if you are we know that we are running against time. You know, regardless of whether egg banks that have done one year at 35. You know, if you are less than then that, because this we know that we are running against time. You know, the egg woman. The 40% is a male factor. What's the male factor? The sperm. Uh, there have been a lot of things, and, uh, and I don't want to go into a lot of it. But um, we now, um, way back 94, my professor um, said that there's an alarming increase in the number of um, low sperm counts. And we laughed at him. If at 94, we have an alarming increase of low sperm count. What will you say in 2021? So you can imagine. And I must be frank here. For 80%, um, permit me, a lot of the people that we have seen now have more of male problems. At the point I sat down, I began to wonder, should we start asking people to do semen analysis before they get married? Because the truth about the matter is this. A lot of people have a lot of male have issues. So the ones we have seen now are more on the male side than the female side. But so the society does not support that. Society would think is a woman that has a problem. So let me come back to it. I've given the five factors. Uterine factor, um, ovarian factor, tuba factor, um, hormonal factor. Now, so let's take the woman. What is the way out? The first thing is we want to see what the uterine factor. The common scan that people look at, readily available, cheap, easily accessible, is one of the best imaging modality that we have. So everybody should take advantage. And, you know, this is what we are saying. 
as much as we can have a lot of people that are trained this modality, we can help so much. So the ultrasound is so because some ladies, uh, let me also shock you that there are some ladies that have what you call a pre pubertal womb. What that means is their womb is so small. And for such ladies, they, may, they might not have seen their menses all through life. It's funny um, uh, because they may like be 22 or 23 and they have not seen their menses ever. You know what happened in that case is that they have a small womb. You know, the ultrasound can detect that. Now, for those that have abnormalities such as uterine diadephes, those that have um, uterus that are, have septations, which will not permit. And better still, those that have fibroids. I'm not saying all fibroids. There are people that have smaller ones that um, they can still give birth. But the ultrasound can help us. I've just given us three examples. The ultrasound can really help us to sort that one out. That's number one. Number two, the uterine factor, I mean, the ovarian factor. The ovarian factor, I, I must, um, the, the, the hormonal assay is a fantastic tool to sorting out uh, the hormones when it comes to ovarian factor. Now, uh, the ovarian factor can tell us a lot of things. It can tell us that the ovaries are not coming out. So let me see, let's see the problems. Number one, you will have a lady that actually is not ovulating at all. Some grow the eggs and they don't, the eggs don't come out. Some don't even grow the eggs at all. When the eggs is not growing, there's nothing. There's nothing for the sperm to mix with. So the best alternative, I mean, the best solution to this is the hormonal acid. The hormonal acid gives us um, a very good um, uh, uh, diagnosis for the ovarian factor. Now, uh, there's what you call folliculometry. We monitor the eggs. We see a lot of things monitoring the eggs. We see that the eggs are not growing at all. That is for uh, the ovarian factor. Let's go to the third one, which is the tuba factor. Uh, because of our time. Tuba factor, the best imaging modality is still the HSG. The HSG has been seen as a very tough and difficult investigation for most people. Why? Uh, because the women talk among themselves. They will tell them that it's very painful. Because you are living, yes, it could be a bit of a discomfort. But it's getting better because people are getting to see how best they can do. Now, the tubes, if they are blocked, is such that they transport. And for someone that's talked about ectopic gestation, why is it that people have ectopic? It's because um, the eggs are actually fertilized in the fallopian tubes. Now, so in the process of coming back, you know, call it that they miss their road. When you miss the road, definitely there'll be a problem. So the eggs will now go and stay in the fallopian tube. And note this, um, most of the approach here is surgery. So if there's a problem of an ectopic, that lady will lose that fallopian tube. And you do not want that. Although, well, things are going up now if we have addition. So uh, the HSG, HSG is called hysterosarpingography, um, is largely for the fallopian tube. We inject and the dye passes through the fallopian If the dye could pass through the fallopian tubes, we rest assured that we are sure that the sperm could swim through the fallopian tubes to go and fertilize the egg. Now, uh, that is the third one. Um, the fifth one, now, which is the spam. Uh, there are a lot of issues with the spam. Uh, so that's a laboratory work. Uh, there's what you call seminar fluid analysis, or better still, we call it SFA, which tells us if they are, the spams are all right, if they can move very fast. Because it's one thing for the spam to... Um, uh, well, we, we have said that people have... Uh, an average man will produce about 13 million sperm cells um, during ejaculation. And 13 million, you need one. So let me demystify one of the myths. Yoruba people will say that there's something called EDA. The question is this. You have 13 million sperm cells and you need one. Where will the rest go to? Some will come out, definitely. So um, that is why medicine don't really support the issue of EDA, that sperm comes out. If the sperm can swim enough, they would get there. Now, the question again is, those that are coming with asospermia, what other imaging modality? There's what you call scrotal Doppler. Now, the blood supply um, 
The blood supply to the testicles is what brings about the process of spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis is the genesis of the sperm. That's what I mean by that. So if we look at the testes and we can see that there's enough blood supply passing through there, we can be rest assured that the man will produce enough sperm. But if you look at it and you can't find enough blood, the man will notice. So if you can bring it together, these factors are very important and they are readily available even in Nigeria Imaging mm. modality that can be done to sort this out. Now, the mm. large question is this. How many people use this? I was giving this before I went offline. I said I saw a lady at 46. And I begin to wonder at 46, what um, time we are running against time? Because at 46, the woman is already, and she stayed 15 years with a man. And now she just dabbled the marriage and she's coming out now to seek help. So the question is this. What has she been doing all this while? So again, too, um, religion also play a, a very big role. Some people will tell you that they are looking up to God. I agree that we all, because when we looked at all these things and, um, and there's no solution, we also look up to God. But why can't we also use what we call the imaging modality and see? So like I said, so let me bring my old discussion down. What is the place of advocacy? What's the place of en public enlightenment? How do people know that there are things that can be done to the situation that they have? And I'm sure that we can also be looking at it even for a platform like this. That's why we're always happy to be part of it, to see what we can do, how we can create some awareness and people will know that what they are having. Now, things have gone very far. And so let me bring this one so that I close. Uh, the issue of tubes, but even when the tubes are gone, IVF is there. And I must tell you now that IVF used to be 20% success rate. It has gone to as much as 80% now. People are getting results from IVF. That is from further um, research has helped us to get. So people are getting results, but how many people know about this? So let me bring this to an end and say thank you very much for listening. <laughs> hey, so thank you, Dr. Body, for for pushing. Um, we really, we really appreciate the sacrifice you have made, having to drive out of your home at this time to just to be part of this session. And so we would not like to take um, waste so much time. Um, so um, two questions have gone forth earlier, and um, I'm sure you have addressed um, one or two of them in passing. Um, so the first one is the issue of uh, the absence of sperm cell. Um, as somebody who is diagnosed with as, uh, as sperm here, what can be done? I know you mentioned it briefly, but um, since Orok is on the call, I think I want Orok to just do a little justice to that in a in a GV. In addition yeah, to what Doctor Bade has touched, so I think Thank I, you. I, I, I've already said that before. If a man has a very low level of testosterone, there's no way he can have stem cells. I, I don't know whether you have heard me. It, 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 there's no way because testosterone is what is is stimulating the testes, the hormone to produce uh, the sperm cells. And uh, I don't know. There's any no magic about this, like Bode has mentioned about the tubal blockage and all that. Those are issues should be looked. Is a holistic issue. You look at the laboratory. You look at the ultrasonography. You look at so many things. You can actually come out and say that this is what is getting the man not to have sperm cells at all. So it is issue that should be looked at holistically. And the second one, that means that the man has the pot in the tummy that collects the. Is, but I don't believe in those. Those are those are things that uh, I, don't, I don't believe in. When it is there, it is there. When it is not there, it's not there. There's no two ways about it. There's no two ways. Some people have never. Some people have for the first time you see them come to the hospital. I mean to the lab. They say, "How old are you?" They say, "I am 38 years old." Ever since my mama born me, that the first time we did the one in my body. And they are proud about it. They are so proud about it. Some of them testify in the church. Pastor will say, since I gave my life to Christ, I have never, no, no doctor has eaten my money. I don't know what I would they go do or what I would they go do. <laughs> <laughs> but we are looking at this issue as being funny. Okay, let me share an experience with you. 
I, I'm going to be very good. I was going home from Bangu. It's a road uh, beside Bangu. A woman did say to me in the church, in the deeper life church. He said, praise the Lord. I, my, I, I give bed like Hebrew women. I did not go to the hospital. The pregnancy started and I just born. If you know the, the, the church was shaking, where can this money? But the, but the coordinator stood up and said, hey, everybody stop. I said, next time, madam, next time when you are pregnant, what should you do? Go to the hospital. <laughs> so these are the things we see in our society. We shouldn't be so proud that ever since I was born, I don't take my children to the hospital, no doctor. No, it's not, it's not about that. Let us do the right thing so that we shouldn't fall victim of, of, uh, of the other side of life. It can be very, very, very painful. Very, very, very painful. If you know what it means for couples to wake up, for 15 years, look at themselves. Oh, my goodness. Oh my. If, if they laugh, just let's clap them because it's a very painful experience. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, Mr. Dan Musa, can you unmute yourself and um, ask your question again? Uh, while I was locked up, um, I lost everything in the chat room. So just unmute yourself and ask your questions again. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, um, if I may record very well, so one of the things he mentioned earlier was that uh, somebody has not conceived at all in 15 years. And um, a woman, on the other hand, is fertile. So I was asking how did they arrive at the conclusion that the woman is, <coughs> is fertile? Okay, his microphone is not working. He didn't log in with your audio, that's why. You can just log out and re-log in. Um, just order, then also log in with your audio then. The audio can come up. So um, he, he now said that the woman is fatal, so and it's a cause for concern. So I think at that point, the conclusion is the woman is fine. I don't know how they arrived at that. I think we need to interrogate how that conclusion came to be. And then probably um, if the woman is fine, then the next thing is not the man has he gone for his own checkup too and the like. So um, let me just give it to the experts in the house to just give their contributions with regards to that kind of challenge. A couple of married for 15 years, but they have not been able to conceive. So what do we advise? Dr. Bode, you go first, then Orop will also give his own perspective to it. Thank you. Like, like I have said, um, they are, um, they, they, this is not rocket science. If you are sleeping mm. with a man, and you're not pregnant, there's a problem. Um, even if you are sleeping with a man, you gave birth maybe seven years ago, and you are unable to, there's a problem. And that problem, nobody is going to bring that problem up from their brain and say, this is where the problem is. We need to investigate. You see, it's just that um, the people around here don't see investigative medicine as something so important. It's a big problem. Um, ask someone to run malaria and thyroid. It's like, you need they, they, they will, can go and buy a boo. And when they buy a boo, the, those ones won't even, you know, for everything we do in, in the hospital, we tell you take four milligram. Four milligram, we are checking per weight. You now do that, and someone is taking an agbo which has no, um, what's the correct? Uh, there's no, you, you're not putting anything to it. There's no way that will work. I have seen a lot of people go to do um, um, fibroids. And um, they go and take abs and drugs <coughs> wherever they are getting those abs and drugs for. You know what we have seen? Like 23 years, I've honestly have seen that those fibroids keep going bigger and bigger. <coughs> now, so the, press, the question now to come back to the question is this. We need to investigate. If 15 years, nothing has happened, we are going to check the woman. Like I said to you, the woman is 60% and the man is 40%. You are going to run a spam check on the man. The woman will check his womb, will check his fallopian tubes, will check his ovaries, and will check the hormones. Until proven otherwise, before anybody is declared fit, we must have seen all these investigations. When they come in, that's when we can put them together. Obviously, something will be wrong somewhere. If the tubes are not blocked, because if the tubes are blocked, it is zero. 
if the spam is low, it's a zero. So we still need to come back to this same story. Anywhere in the world, we still need to come back to this same story and find out where exactly the problem is so that it can be sorted out. Okay. So, um, all right, sir. Can yes, we have uh, your opinion, please? My opinion is not different from what Dr. Bode said. When you are doing something, you don't get any results. Something is eating up the results somewhere. So let me give you a very small personal experience. Here in Antony Village, uh, many years ago, when I started, a <coughs> um, I had women that that that, that came in twelve years. They have never conceived. Ten years, eight years. I had that, and they were getting pregnant in succession. In fact, the, the, the only thing was so dramatic that I became so popular in the name of it. If you ask me, what did I do when they came? I said, okay, uh, did I even do that? Uh, yes, I wrote a one say for them. I did infection, you do hypogenal swab, urine, and all that. But I remember one thing that was done to almost all of them. There was an injection that time called tucumycin. Tucumycin. I don't know how it does. I don't know what it does. All the women that took, all the husband and wife that came and took tucumycin, they all became pregnant. Hmm. It therefore means that something was wrong. Something was depriving that. These have been attending big team, big consultant. They give them messages. They do all, almost all of them. And they think they are very popular in the neighborhood. Hmm. So if we don't look at the issue of chlamydia, a woman that has chlamydia will not will see be showing the normal hormonal profile. The husband will show the normal self count. But this chlamydia is one of the causes of infertility. What about syphilis? That can distort the chip of a, a, a person. It doesn't start in one day. And all these even infection that people had during secondary school, they were afraid to tell anybody. Maybe the girl wake up, you see that the pants is stained yellow. Uh, 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 Half female girl, I always tell them, when you see your pants stained, let me know so that you can take appropriate steps. Because you can have no problem, you can have them anywhere. And years back, that the person wants to settle down, you need to see all these issues coming up. By that time, you put it there. So I don't believe in the fact that somebody can be, can be, yeah, two people can be normal, 15 years, they don't get uh, pregnant. No, 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 something is wrong. I will not address it. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, so um, we've heard it all from our guest speakers. Um, I want to say that, um, they are always handy and available to us. Okay, let me hear for our speakers. Yeah. Um, I just saw a question now. Uh, he said he's happy we mentioned fibroids. That why are so many people dying of fibroid surgery? Um, I don't know who asked the question, but I saw it, but it's important that we That's answer it. So going, okay, <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> I'm going to answer that in um in one se one second. If uh, now um I must say that it's not, um, if you take an assessment, a lot of people do uh, fibroid surgery and nothing happened to them. They came back and they are fine. But I must say this, that um, many a times when you get into surgery, um, you do not know what others have. Mm. And because everybody just use the word fibroid. Mm. And that's what we see. You know, for all of us sitting here, uh, if you have an, underlying condition let me give you if the person is diabetic or better say he has an uncontro uncontrolled hypertension then the person you may get in and find out that what you thought was a problem was actually not is another thing mm. so um and when you have those things um, you you at times some you don't have control over mm. so not everybody die actually a lot of them come out uh, because it's, it's a, uh, let me call it a bread and butter for the gynecologist. It's actually a bread and butter surgery because they are perfected. It is a lot in Nigeria. So people are very good at doing that here. Mm. But in some would have, some will have complicated issues already. Like we have said, um, some put some stuff because they have fiber, they put some stuff in their vagina. And by the time they come to the hospital, there is an addition. The vagina is completely blocked. You can't even find a way to get into the cervix too. Mm. What do you say to that? Mm. So 
Really, people should have seen small fibroids that warrant nothing. I just spoke with someone two days ago. What she wanted to do was tell me the size. I said, what do you need the size for? I want to continue with my hab. And I said, in 23 years of experience, what I've seen is that the fibroids will have increased much more. Some will have indented of another organ. Mm. And the fibroid is a non-life-threatening mass. It can, it, it does not kill. We must know that fact. It does not kill. But when we have added more things to it, in fact, there's this school of thought, if it's not disturbing you, please don't disturb it. You know, because some have some that are, and they are in different forms and shapes. So please, it's not, um, it's not a very true statement that a lot of them die. No, um, I've worked in teaching hospital that they, every day, if they do, the least they do is like 10. And they have done so well with it. A lot of people are coming out of it. It's just um, this thing that people die. No, no, it's not. Um, I think there are other things that must have been associated with it that will probably kill the patient. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, so somebody just question that um, we should remember the questions that were asked earlier. I think those questions have been answered, except if there is any addition to them. Um, the first one is the issue of um, do medicine believe in selfish things? And um, I think our speakers jointly agreed that um, we do not believe in anything selfish. So if it's, especially for um, those that are into imaging services, it's either it is there or it's not there. It's like a picture the way you pose is the way <laughs> you will see yourself at the end of the day. So, you know, you have some people come in to say, I am pregnant. I'm even nine months pregnant now. And you go there, you see a normal womb. You look at the adjoining organs, there is nothing in. So, um, for us, we don't believe um, in feltish practices. Not to say that um, there are no challenges, um, but we do not tie it down to fetish means. Um, let me just put it that like that. Um, then the second question, if I'm not mistaken, that was asked was the issue of um, aspamia, that what can be done? And um, I think um, Mr. Rock also mentioned that um, if the oh, testosterone yeah. levels are very low, the major thing to do is to see how they can boost it up because we believe that once that hormone is um, back, then definitely the person will begin to produce sperm cells again. And I think Dr. Bode also mentioned the issue of um, vascular ultrasound that is being done, which is to look at blood supply to the test testicles. I don't know if any of them wants to add any other thing to, to that contribution before um, we take the next question. Um, on, Dr. Deumi, do you want on to keep anything? On, on Aspania. Also, as a um, the, yes. Well, there, there are, um, just like um, Chief Forrock said, there are, what we should be looking at is, uh, for an average clinician is looking at what is what are the causes. Yeah. Number one, mm -hmm. testosterone level, yes. That's what makes us our man. That's what gives us our baritone, baritone tone and all that. Number two, if there's an occlusion in yeah. those vessels, yeah. Um, something supplies that makes it work. Wow. If there's an occlusion, um, some men also take a couple of things. Let me give you this so that we it can help us. To the urologist, what kills the sperm cells? Um, um, some had lived a very rough life. Um, they have, um, I, um, Chief Orok will agree with me. Some guys were just walking and said, well, I slept with a girl that don't even know who the girl is, but well, they may probably met. They have been doing this over the years. You have picked up all manner of infective process. So if you pick on a lot of infection, it will wait for you. The funny thing is it will be killing the germ cells. Yeah. And as it's killing the germ cells, it will now get to a time that you want to marry. And when you want to marry, all the germ cells have been completely dead. So what will happen? Mm. So that's one. Number two, male. Um, there's this general rule that people should stop wearing um, cotton pants. Yeah, they yeah. produce heat. They produce the way nature nature has done the testes. Is to come down. 
That's it. It brings it out of the whole body because that temperature is higher than that of the testicles. So it brings it out. Nature is very wise in doing its job. It brings it out, you know. So when you now wear a nylon pant, you have increased the heat. Just the same way when a lot of people don't enter, but they, we still have larger percentage entering the public transport where the heat of the car is directly coming to them. That also kills the germ cells. So, um, a lot of... What about what we take in? And these are factors we should be looking at. Um, some naturally are not, but some are not. Their, their causes may not be, but a lot of people are self... Uh, what about lifestyle? Let me use that word. Lifestyle causes their reduction in spam. And so, enlightenment again has to go in so that as much as possible... Um, people understands what they need to do because that's what you call actually the spam health, which people are not even looking at. Unfortunately, um, um, awareness is not so much. People are not talking about all these things, you know, and that's why we have gotten ourselves to this level. Some would have, um, what do you call it, um, gonorrhea. And I, I was in a bus some time ago. I heard what these guys were talking about on treatment. You know, I almost forgot who I am. Because what they were saying, you no, know, when you take this, they have the drugs already. Hmm. And they don't even know what the side effect of these drugs hmm. are. Hmm. And mix it up with pack rumor and something, whatever they call it. Hmm. By the time you mix all those things up, you're going to kill the child cells completely. Hmm. Hmm. You know? So, these are the problems. And they believe in what they do. Because they would rather seek the alternative way rather than the medical practice. Mm. And that's where the problem... I'm sure Chief Orok, you, you, you see a lot of this coming in. When you ask them what they have taken, yeah. what they have taken, that's when you will know that, wow. And that's a problem. That's my take on this issue. Okay, so um, before we take the next question, this, um, probably that will be the last because um, we have um, passed our time already. I don't want us to stay longer than uh, scheduled. Um, I want us to talk about the issue of undescended um, testes um, because sometimes a lot of people don't actually have the history of what happened to them while they were young. And this is actually another advice for young mothers. It's always good once your baby is giving to you, you examine your baby very well um, to check and then be sure that um, all the organs are complete. You have a child by a male child is born and the testis has not dis descended. Yeah, and it's still hooked in the groin. It's not yet out. And then if that is not um, taken out um, before four months from the time of uh, birth, it may lead to all these complications that um, we have that we experience later in life. So I don't know if... Uh, Ms. Dr. Bode or Mr. Rob wants to say something about that because I know that is one of the major things. And of course, because the child is young, he doesn't even know something happened to him. <clears throat> and then, you know, the why environment, because of stigmatization, a lot of people have issues and they just keep it to themselves. So I don't know if you want to enlighten the public as regards that briefly. Okay. Dr. Bode, uh, to say? Let, me, let me just... Uh, <laughs> Let me say, I saw I saw a, a six-year-old boy yesterday, just mm. yesterday, um, that Saturday, mm. yes, yesterday. Six-year-old, and they were asking me to look for um, one of the testicles uh, in the abdomen. Um, we must know that that's where it starts from before it descended uh, into the test, into the scrotal sac. Um, so what we do early in life, so... The question now is this. This is the second person. The one I've seen, uh, the other one I've seen is about 17 years old. So the question is this. What have they been waiting for all this while? Um, uh, the prognosis is quite bad because some of them turn to cancer. So care and caution must be taken in that area. So like we have said, um, we really need to work on mothers, especially the people on this other side to know that um, the testis is important to see the truth. Immediately, your child is given to you. And you check it. Even when you get to check it. So it's a problem. Um, 
Because this one too, one of the complication is um, the, um, testicular torsion. In the process of coming, mm. some of them, in the process of coming down, it twists on itself. And this one has 40, 48 hours deadline. What do I mean by 48 hours? If nothing is done in that 48 hours, that guy is sterile forever. Jeez. So, um, you see, these are the problems. The question is, how many people are well informed about how to check the testicles? I can liken this to the breast of the woman. Most people come in and they don't even know what a simple breast self-examination is. And when you don't know, you see, I think it's a problem in Africa. You see, when you want to take, when you want to, um, when you want to hide something from an African man, write it down, hmm. you know. Um, so the point is actually, um, we are not, these people are not, maybe, well, at times I think is, I don't want to talk about level of poverty. I think is probably level of their awareness or level of their education. I'm sorry to use that word. Mm. Um, they don't know and they still don't seek knowledge from people that know. And that's why a lot of male are suffering because there are a lot of people, if you get to the pediatric clinic, you will see a lot that are having issues with undescended tests. And it's because someone had not done, because there's no way, if a six-year-old is coming to meet you now, what will he have said? The only thing he will say is that he will just be looking at you. But it's the function of someone who has not done what is meant to do. Mm. So, uh, advocacy. And also... The, Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Uh, go ahead, please. All right. and, ahead. and also, this issue of the um, educated parents, my child must wear pants, must wear rubber pants, or they will not get in my... My sister and all that. The penny should be allowed to be spent. At, at, at that younger age, if you want, must weigh a child, let him weigh something that is loose. Maybe they come back from, it doesn't even, it's not even a factor that a child must wear pants to school as well. If it was wear, let it be something that is loose. So it can flow with the with, uh, nika. Let us allow this thing. Where the penny is, penny is also a growing organ, we all know that. It's a growing organ. You can imagine if somebody was born, you keep on pressing this, uh, this the finger inside, pressing the it is a little bigger with you. So those things, we have social factor as well, that parents need to take uh, uh, notes of it. That's my, my small tip. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so we have two other questions. Um, I think it's best we take them one apiece. Um, so the first question will go to Dr. Bode. Um, it says that why is there bleeding during pregnancy? So bleeding by vagina in pregnancy, what's the reasons? What are the likely causes of that? Um, the second question, which I will direct to Mr. Rock, is um, somebody is asking that why does my wife get um, irrational during her pregnancy? I actually use the word coin coin. Said normally she is a nice and respectful person. But it's like yeah, she's always angry that someone is yeah. taking banana when she's pregnant. Yeah. So um, I don't know if Orok wants to take that, and if anybody also wants has any contribution to make to it, yeah. then maybe we can hear Mrs. Afolabi share her own opinion as regards that too. So, um, Ms. Dr. Bodeva. Okay. Um, bleeding in pregnancy, um, I'm just going to divide it into two. Uh, the first one is the one that happens in the first <coughs> trimester. Uh, they are called the complication of first trimester. Uh, there are a lot of them. Uh, uh, let me lay this foundation. Anytime something is wrong up there, which you can't see, when I say up there, within the womb, the only way nature tells us is when the woman bleeds. So that is nature showing you and see we don't joke with these signs because for all you care if you joke with it then um uh, there's going to be a big problem mm -hmm. now so what are those things mm -hmm. number one threatening abortion threatening abortion is a painless bleeding in the first trimester mm -hmm. um, the woman comes in by the time we check baby is still intact but she's bleeding that's threatening to come out mm -hmm. Another one is an incomplete abortion. That's one, the baby is already, or the fetus is already coming out, part of it. Mm. So it's just um, the other part that is remaining. 
So you can see there are complications. In whatever way you want to do, we don't want to allow bleeding. That's why one of the major things we do is to put them on bed rest. When you put them on bed rest, to see if you can salvage. And then there are injections that can be given to stop those bleeding, you know, from coming out. The other one is called mixed abortion. Mixed abortion is fetus is already dead. Nature won't allow it to just stay there. He knows that can be dangerous to the mother. It shows sign. And what is the sign? It starts to see blood, you know. Um, this, um, please don't forget, I'm talking about first trimester now. Um, there's another one, a very bad one is ectopic gestation. Ectopic would also come. Woman has positive pregnancy test. One of the things that you notice is bleeding per vagina, you know, and she's pregnant and you can't find anything inside. That is a gynecological emergency. Mm. Until proven otherwise, the woman can just be walking and go and die. Mm. So you want to run. That's why we don't, for us, we don't joke with bleeding in pregnancy, especially the early ones. Now, let me jump over to the late ones. Mm. This is another gynecological emergency. Mm. Um, the placenta is a very, very important um, part of pregnancy. And I must say this fact that before you start celebrating the woman, you must see the placenta. So you don't tell someone, Madam, congratulations, until you have seen the placenta. Now, there are times the placenta separates from the wall of the uterus. If it does, under that, you have the conceal and the review one. The woman starts to bleed. Now, I said this guy because they must land that woman in the theater or else they will risk the life of the woman. So the condition is called placenta previa. When the placenta is closed, placenta must not come first before the fetus. So placenta previa, depending on the kind, you manage it. And you know, the funny thing is this, uh, um, very early in pregnancy, I, I mean, sorry, very early in practice in just university hospital, I saw a patient in some 20 years ago and I was excited that I've seen that the baby is dead. You know, it, when you say it's a good case, it's a bad case for the patient, you know. So, and I didn't check very well. The placenta was also right in front. So the gynecologist just said, okay, well, let's just see how much of the ripening the cervix is so that they can deliver the woman. You know, immediately put his hand in the vagina to just check the cervix. He went into the placenta street. Do you know, the gynecologist and the woman were wheeled to the theater. Because if he removes his hand, the woman will bleed to death. You see how much mm. that you want to be careful with bleeding. Mm. So when a lady comes, in whether you know or you know, if you hear that it's bleeding, we don't joke with it. Mm. Because placenta previa is a very bad prognosis. Mm. But if it's been seen, it can be monitored. The second one that is worse than it, than previa, is a brochure. A brochure. That means it's separated. That will bring pain and bleeding per vagina. And that woman too will still have to go through the surgeon's knife. Mm. So you see that uh, bleeding is in whatever trimester you look at, it's a complication in pregnancy. And we do not, an average doctor don't want to see a woman in pregnancy coming in with bleeding. It could be anything. That's number one. Number two, um, why ladies misbehave? I, I'm sorry, I use the word misbehave. <laughs> why Why? They are discussing with you now and they yell at you in the next minute. You need to know the, no, the amount of hormones released. Let me give you, I'm a vascular person. Uh, the uterine artery in a non-pregnant woman carries about 40 mils of blood. A third trimester, it has expanded to carry 10 times of that volume. Of That's 400 mils. 400 mils blood rushing through someone's body is not easy. Hormones that are released are, you know, you are carrying something for two people. Hmm. So that's why they swing moods in, in a per second billion way. Hmm. They are swinging because it's a lot, you know. Hmm. And if you really know what, that's why, you know, when you take a man, an average man to CS, the man will collapse. If you see the number of blood gushing out during Syrian hmm. section. Hmm. So I think we should give kudos to the women for <laughs> what they go through during pregnancy. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, sir. So, um, Mr. Rock, can we have your perspective, please? Yeah. I, I only Before want Mrs. Afalabi. Yes. I only want to make one contribution as per the bleeding in pregnancy. 
from my little experience, I understand that uh, when a woman is pregnant, most women, not all, the sex position should change. There are some women that, uh, when they come, come up with all these things, uh, some of them will say, once they go and look pregnant, they begin to see whether my baby is still there or not. They say, this is not even the right thing to do. You have to do that, you want to do scan. And I asked them, did you meet your husband? Yes, yeah, we met in the morning and the evening she started bleeding. Or we met yesterday night and the morning started bleeding. So the, this is, this should be one of the social uh, intervention by way of communication. There are some women that when they are pregnant, when she's having sex with the husband, she will not open her leg very wide again. If she allow the husband to enter, she will now put her leg as try, as try, so that the impact will not be too much in that environment. From my, my experience, that's what I've seen. So uh, sex in marriage, sex during pregnancy should be curtailed and controlled. If not, a lot of people always come down with this bleeding. And when the bleeding starts, uh, I don't know, there are a lot of intervention. In most cases, the baby will always come down. Hmm. And just like Dr. Bode said, uh, for the social aspect of getting angry during pregnancy, a lot of divorce, a lot of uh, black book. This my wife is stubborn, a very stubborn woman, very respectful. Start when she's pregnant. So we all we have to look at this factor. Hmm. But this is the rule in my church. I, I perform a role before we will get married. I gather the young people. I teach them all these things. I teach them how to have sex in, in marriage and all those things. And in fact, the first, the first uh, lesson I had with them, all of them ran out the go and buy Martina. They said, I've never had this kind of thing in my life. So it is something we should understand that when a woman is pregnant, she can just sit down like this. Okay, please come and wash the hand. So what not just sit down? Come and wash your hand after eating. Can you carry on with my mother? No. You don't understand how she feels. So these are things we should, people should understand mm. how a home should go and all that. Mm. That is a contribution. Um, okay, so we've had the men. Let's ask the women who have actually experienced this yeah, yeah. before <laughs> to just give us their perspective to it. I know we have at least two of them on the call, um, Mrs. Afolabi and uh, Mrs. Aoma. So um, can we hear Mrs. Afolabi speak to us? Then after which, hopefully, Mrs. Aoma will choose to tell us one or two things about um, um Behavioral um, changes in pregnancy. Thank you. Mr. Falabi, please. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Can Good evening. You. Good evening. Everyone. <laughs> okay, so from the female. And from the nurse's perspective, uh, when a woman is pregnant, I always say no two pregnancies are the same. In fact, you can have the same gender, you can have female, female, and you react different ways. You have different behavioral changes in that pregnancy. You can have male, female, and you have different behavioral changes. One can be calmer, one can be as in not you, and you will know that this is not you. It is like uh, Mr. Bode said, is due to the hormonal changes in pregnancy and we all react to it in different ways. Another thing that can happen in pregnancy that will cause bleeding in pregnancy that I'm not sure uh, Mr. Bode touched or I did not hear is um, sometimes when one gets pregnant at the, at the beginning stage, one may see the next period and not know that the person is pregnant. Some people even see two, three periods even after that pregnancy. And when you check, you find out that the pregnancy is normal. However, I must say that the bleeding during those times are not the same thing as menses. They are not as heavy. They are not, um, they are not as heavy as that one. They are not as as dark as that blood. They are usually light, like someone that is spotting. So sometimes when people have bleeding during implantation of the fertilized ovum in the uterus, so that also happens. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you very much. Thank so, you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank God for our women. Whenever they are around, they always give us a perspective, <laughs> we, we, a we, unique we, perspective. We can hear from um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is Aoma. I know you're on the call. Um, do you mind to contribute to the discourse? John? Thank you. Good day, everybody. Good evening from this side. Um, <laughs> What I want to say, I think the doctor mentioned it. I have had an ugly experience of yelling while pregnancy, and that day I lost the pregnancy. And then I, I, I think it's a hormonal thing. And then every woman, I think it was in the office, I was stressed, and then I began to yell at my superior because of the stress she subjected me to. And that same day, I bled till the next day, and finally, I lost that pregnancy. A woman is supposed to be managed at pregnancy, if possible. Another thing is not only yelling, being subjected to stress. I've also had a complication driving on traffic for hours, and at the end of the day, I started bleeding in my first pregnancy. Wow. And then I was kept on bed rest. I was kept on bed rest for two weeks, after which um, it was, um, I think I was pregnant for three plates, and I lost one. And to God, by God's grace, I was able to have two. I was managed well. I was on bed rest for two weeks. Mm. So I think we sh every woman should, uh, should be advised to manage stress very well, mm. if possible, at the letter and at the trimester, if possible, to stop driving, especially for we that go through um, driving on traffic for hours. If it's possible, stopping, um, uh, 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 encouraging such a woman to stop driving or stop engaging in anything stress. So women will tell you that during their pregnancy, that's when they are more active. But some other women, it, 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 it leads to complication. Being subjected to stress, being subjected to anger, it could uh, result to some of those bleeding. I'm speaking from my own um, experience now. Anger, yelling, and then being subjected to any form of stress at all can lead to can lead to complications. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much, my girl. That's my girl. <laughs> she always give me um, protection, cover in the office. I hide under her to do things. <laughs> it's a privilege to have you on the call, ma. Um, so um, I think we've had it all for from our speakers for today, and by the grace of God, um, I know with time, most likely this is going to be. Uh, by monthly by monthly sessions by the grace of God but for now um but for now we'll be having it once in a quarter based on our earlier discussion um so rounding up um, the session it will not be fair without um allowing our guest speakers to tell us a bit about themselves and um, especially how we can reach them just so as to help us um, address some of our concerns. So um, in a minute or two, um, Dr. Bode, can you just tell our audience um, how to reach you and um, some of those things that um, you, they can expect from you in your capacity as a professional? Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm with this. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, um, I, I reside, I run a practice in Ogun State, uh, Ogun State, Nigeria, of course. Um, I can be reached at formboardmedics at gmail.com. Formboard, F-U-N-B-O-D, M-E-D-I-X, uh, at gmail.com. Mm. Um, I think that's, that's all. You can, there's a lot that um, we do um, from um, infertility uh, management to um, complication of pregnancy scans. 
um, and and every other thing that we do. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, so, um, I think Doctor Rock has um, just shared his own uh, contacts with us in case you want to reach him. I don't know if he wants to say anything to the people. I've shared my contact. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, my contact. You can always uh, reach out to yourself anytime in the platform. We are starting something very important. Our goal is to ensure that our sisters and brothers who are ignorant are well informed so they can live better lives. I think that is my, that is the great thing I will, I will, do, I will do in this platform. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We are grateful for, for that. Um, like I said, Dr. Orok is a researcher with Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, and um, he's been doing so much um, on the desk, so you can always tap from his wealth of knowledge. Um, so that brings us to the close of today's uh, webinar session. But before we go, um, I know one of our directors is on call. I don't know if we can get a closing remarks from him. That's uh, um, Mr. Babatope Makun um, before the Secretary General was the vote of thanks. And um, wow, 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 wow. What an, <laughs> what an exciting session. Good evening, everybody. I've been thoroughly thoroughly enlightened. I've been thoroughly educated. Thank you so much, Doctor and um, our other facilitators. And um, we do this in memory of our dear Halima. And um, thanks to the convener, thanks to Secretary General, thanks to everybody. Dario, you have been a Trojan. Uh, personally, I do, you know, I deeply appreciate you. Even beyond this, we do a lot on the other front. I can only imagine how much it has taking you to pull this all together. Thanks to the team that worked with you and God bless you and um, we hope that this will just be the beginning of many more that we're going to do. So on behalf of Clyde and everybody, I say thank you to our facilitators and everybody here and I, and I wish you the best of the week ahead. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> that is um, the, my direct toga Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um the secretary general is also on the call i just want him to say hello to the guest speakers on behalf of the organization sir john sir um i want to sincere um the guest speakers uh for the wonderful job done and uh, for actually taking out their time to honor an invitation and uh, medical issues. And on behalf of life, I really want to have more of you because uh, we've learned so many things from you. I don't want this to be the full stop. So we still want to learn as much as possible. And, and I'm sure many of our members want to also reach out individually with the details already provided. We always get in touch um, as they need to be. So I want to, at the same time, appreciate the leadership of the convener and all the leaders of the directorate who are here present this evening. Thank you so much, everyone, and God bless you all. Um, okay, thank you very much, Sergeant. Um, so, the convener, sir, I don't know if you have a word or two to put across. I know we promised Pantheon, but we ended up serving jollof rice. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you want to say anything to the people. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, well, well, it, it is your... Yeah, you did, sir. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. It is your show tonight, and uh, for for a change, uh, this is one of the few times where I've I've been able to comfortably sit through sessions and just enjoy it, just like everybody else, without having to do anything. Um, I would disagree with you. Uh, I think you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> you promised us pounded yam. You delivered a buffet. <laughs> you delivered a buffet, and uh, I really, really want to celebrate you. Uh, Dr. O'Rock is a star hat. Uh, Dr. Bode is a star hat. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Aoma and uh, Mrs. Uh, Afolabi 
I I really, really want to appreciate you. And I, I, I want to particularly, you know, Mr. Falabi came in to point out certain things that were not included and they were really, really key. And Mrs. Aoma, thanks for sharing that personal uh, experience. Uh, and uh, I, I want to appreciate all those who asked those brilliant questions. Uh, I believe is uh, Mr. Uh, and thank you to Belo, uh, Belo, uh, uh, Malambelo Abdullah. Thanks for all you did in the background in helping to uh, 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 let other people know about what was going on here yeah, uh, whilst it was uh, going on. And I believe was it Dan Aminu, Dan Musa, or something? Uh, look, those questions were really, really brilliant. Uh, and uh, all those who asked, and uh, architect, uh, barrister, uh, Nath Alade, and everybody as well. I want to thank you for this session. I repeat again, you promised uh, Pandediam you deliver the buffet. Uh, <laughs> the problem I'm going to have with this is a quarter. I really do not think it's good enough. You've said so much today. You've wet, You've done a lot to whet the appetite uh, and to have people delay for another three months before having this opportunity. I'm sure the word will go back to me. People will say, oh my God, why didn't you let me know this was what was going to happen? And then they are going to prepare their questions and they're going to invite some others who they know have problems here and there, whether in uh, uh, conception or uh, physiological issues, other, you know, so, and then they say, oh, just prepare your questions, don't worry, uh, July, August, September, by August, by September, you, will, you may be able to ask, ask it, uh, it won't work that way, you've done a lot to whet the appetite, I'm excited about this, uh, these are not little beginnings, these are massive beginnings, and I'm really, really very thankful, uh, and I want you to actually find a way that we can do this no later than uh, uh, bi-monthly, you know, uh, you know, and whatever it is, whatever space, whatever slot you want, the organization will grant it, and I, by the grace of God, so please let us know what you want to do with it. Uh, every support you need, we're going to give it to you. Thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate you. God bless you. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. Your kind words. Um, thank you, everyone, for being part of the call. We are really encouraged, and um, we are motivated by your presence. And um, just like the convener has said, and I've also mentioned earlier, there is so much in store, so much that we are going to do, so much we are set to achieve. We are hitting the ground running by the grace of God, and then um, before long, you will begin to see practical dividends. So, thank you all for being part of the call. God bless you. So. From on behalf of the convener and everybody, I want to say thank you very much to our speaker.